Welcome back, Sanwa fans. The Sanwa adventure continues. Wait till you see this little bundle of joy. It's the PM11 digital multimeter from Sanwa. The Sanwa PM11 is made in Japan. Pocket multimeters are very popular these days and for good reason. They are easy to transport, pretty powerful, and overall basically can almost do the same task as a full-size multimeter. Yeah, why not? First thing you'll notice, at least the first thing I noticed, is just that this is different looking. Um, not your typical pocket multimeter enclosure, and that's probably a good thing. No, this thing is classy. It is really, really solid, rugged, nice hard plastic, and uh, you know, just overall looks very, very nice. Almost like an e-reader cover. You simply press down on that little clasp here and voila, yeah, there it is in all of its Sanwa glory, 4,000 counts with a bar graph. Wow. In the box itself, we get our standard certificate of calibration as well as our mini user guide or user manual. And uh, this is sort of a pull out guide. Um, all in all, nicely done. Uh, it is in both English and Japanese, but uh, very, very nicely done. All right, on to the good stuff. Boy, just look at the lines on this little pocket meter. Absolutely, absolutely gorgeous. Um, maybe I sound like a broken record, but I really am impressed by the overall fit and finish. The molding that Sanwa puts out with its multimeter range, uh, really second to none. They do an amazing job. Look at the clasp mechanism here on this uh, cover. You know, this thing is definitely going to be in there for the long term. Very, very nice. Now it folds all the way back and you can actually use it as a stand. Captain Hook. Eddie, soldier. Let's talk about those Sanwa test leads. You know, I love my Sanwa test leads. I always have from years and years ago. They continue to impress. It doesn't matter what meter what particular Sanwa lead I'm using, they're all just really good. These are the TL11TAs, very, very thin, almost pen-like. And uh, they have a CAT2 500 volt re, uh, rating. And if you open up, take off that uh, cover, look at that, yeah, very, very nice. Once again, as with all Sanwa test leads, uh, gold tipped and, you know, just very sharp. Very, very, very nice. The leads are actually quite long as well, and they have a 24 AWG gauge rating and uh, 600 volts, so uh, very, very nice. Now the PM11 is a small meter. You can tell here with the CD732, an average size meter, uh, about the size of a Unity uh, UT191T. Um, in the middle, we've got that tiny hybrid, the PM33A, which is tiny. And uh, beside it, once again, we have an even smaller PM11. So it gives you a really good idea of just how small this little pocket rocket is. For people that like precision, here you go. 4.6 inches in length. That's about 117 millimeters, I believe. And let us just, here, let's just do that for my 117 millimeters. And we will take the width and just over three inches so definitely a pocket rocket that should fit in your pocket that's about 77 millimeters awesome to get into the back unit to put the batteries in you are greeted with an enclosure that holds two lr44 batteries simply uh, one small phillips and you are good to go taking a closer look at the selector switch starting at the off position followed by volts dc Volts AC, resistance up to 40 mega ohm, continuity, diode. Once again, these test leads are permanently in place. They cannot be removed. And you are greeted at the bottom with the CAT rating itself. Maximum 500 volts CAT2, 300 volts CAT3. Let's turn the meter on. And we have a nice audible beep. And look at that. Wow. It even has a bar graph. Incredible. Now, before I talk about the display, let me just say that this selector switch itself is very, very easy to operate. It has a very good, solid, tactile feel. And considering it's a small meter, um, they've really oversized the selector. 
and I think they've done a great job. LCD display in all of its glory. It is definitely on the smaller side. Um, it is a small diminutive display, but that being said, still contrast wise, it seems to be quite good. Now there is some glare as you can see, um, and there is no backlight, so that may be an issue for some people. But uh, generally speaking, considering the fact they've actually put a um, bar graph on this diminutive display, I think all in all, it looks pretty good. Now you may have noticed that those test leads actually have a little clip on them. Almost looks like a, a pen. You know, we're going to clip that onto your uh, shirt. Good old fashioned days. Well, you know what? It actually does clip. It goes into the housing. It's only got one side, but you can put your test lead on, slide right into that sliding enclosure, just like that. So um, if you want to do some probing and not have to worry about holding both probes, it could come in really handy. Good stuff. DC accuracy on this particular meter, the readings are 400 millivolts to 500 volts in the DC range. Sitting right now at 249.9 and oh, so close. 250 is what we want to see, and yeah, that is very, very close. 2.500, oh yeah, 2.501, beauty. AC voltage is next. Now remember, this is not a true RMS meter. Uh, no, no TRMS on this little guy. 122.5 volts, yeah, fairly close. Now sitting in resistance mode, 1.5 kilo ohm. 5% resistor and spot on Sanwa. Take a quick look at the resistance box. 5 mega ohm right now. Okay, okay, I hear you. 6 mega ohm. 7 mega ohm. All right, so obviously it is slow to range in resistance mode. 8 mega ohm. All right, let's bring it right back down to 2 mega ohm. Yeah, not the fastest in resistance mode. 2.9 mega ohm already. 2.99 coming up as 2.99. So it's definitely accurate, um, just not the Roadrunner in resistance range. Oh, wow, this is fun, fun, fun. My favorite time, as you know, continuity. Stock probes, of course, because they're permanently attached to the multimeter. Yeah, okay, here we go. Three, two, one. It's latched. It's not really very loud. And there is definitely a lag. It is definitely usable, though. Hmm. All right, making up my mind. Eh, it's okay. It's okay. Sixty-eight point three decibels, the maximum output in continuity mode. I have it hooked up to a DC power supply right now, and I'm just looking at that bar graph. And overall, I'm fairly impressed. It is pretty responsive, uh, going back and forth here, up to around four or five volts. But uh, yeah, I mean, generally speaking, uh, yeah, that is that is really good. Good refresh rate, excellent. LED testing mode, here we go. Starting off with the green LED. Yes, it is lit ever so slightly and we did get a forward voltage drop. Same with the yellow. Over to the red, yes, it is lit and a forward voltage drop, wow, surprised. Over to the blue and it is lit, but no forward voltage drop. Finally, the white lit again, uh, but no forward. So, hey, five out of five in terms of illumination and three to five in terms of forward voltage drop. You know what? That's pretty good considering we're getting power here by two LR44 batteries. Hmm, not too shabby. Okay, we're going to try standard diode. Here we go. I really don't see any problem. And of course, no problem. 2.89 volts maximum output voltage in diode mode. By the way, to get the test leads into the meter, really not too bad of a deal. Um, you stick them in there, and it doesn't have to be perfect, really, because that encasement has a nice little uplay to it, and you can just simply, and I did say simply, feed it over, and voila. Awesome. It's 
a very basic multimeter, that's for sure. But you know what? That's not always a bad thing, especially when it comes to a pocket portable multimeter such as the PM11. All right, let's take a look on the inside and see what it looks like. Here we are with the internals. Starting off with the back of the cover. Ah, here we go. And yeah, no shielding. Very nicely done, though, in terms of the actual uh, separation from the base of the unit. Uh, four Phillips screws and... Uh, no problem whatsoever. And that battery compartment, as you can see, it does have a threaded insert. So that is definitely a plus. On the reverse side, really not much to see. Uh, here we have those positive and negative test leads themselves. Wonderful globs of solder. Yeah, I love it when I see a nice big blob of solder like that. And good size gauge wiring. So good job, Sanwa. There's the two LR44 batteries. And we have uh, one capacitor over here, but that's it. That's all. Um, I see a little bit of input protection over here peeking out. Let's flip it over. Reverse side of the PCB and wow, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Look at those track pads for the selector switch. That is 24 karat gold, baby. Loving it, loving it. Very, very nice. And as well, there is our piezo. And we have the selector tracks right here. Once again, gold plated and uh, nice and thick pads as well. Um, here we have one lowly PTC on the voltage side. Taking a look at the inside. Wow, check it out. Starting off, you don't see this every day. This is for the piezo. We've got two tiny little springs here, and that's what makes contact with those contacts on the PCB, giving us that buzzer. Very, very interesting. The main IC, well, there you go in all of its glory. That's the Cyrus Tech ES51977. Uh, an integrated analog to digital converter, 42 segment bar graph, LCD display, and only takes three volts uh, in terms of a power supply. Very, very nice. For the display itself, here are the contacts. Here is the Elastomar, and that is what's, what gives us that really nice, crisp LCD display. Overall, um, very nicely done, nice and clean. Nice big blobs of solder where you need nice big blobs of solder. And uh, good attention to detail. Okay, gonna put it all back together. Go back with my closing thoughts. Closing thoughts on the Sanwa PM11 Pocket Multimeter. Yes, I love it. You knew that was gonna happen, right? Wow, this is once again a really, really nice multimeter. A digital multimeter with a bar graph and test leads that are just awesome. Um, and long. These are pretty long test leads. This has definitely got a lot of versatility. Now the downside is it does not do current. Yeah, I know. Oh, milliamps would have been so nice, but alas, it is what it is. If you're looking for a good basic all-around pocket multimeter though, it's really hard to go wrong with the PM11. The Sanwa PM11 gets a solid 3.5 out of 5 stars. Hey, I really like this PM11. I've been using it off and on for a couple of months now and it is a joy to use. And don't forget, we have that Sanwa prize draw giveaway September 15th live on YouTube. Yes, you can win a multimeter courtesy of Sanwa. And you know what? I'm gonna give away at least two of them, maybe more, we'll see. We'll see if I'm in a good mood or not. Hey, I'm always in a good mood. Stay tuned for that, courtesy of Sanwa Electric Instrument Company Limited, Tokyo, Japan. Till the next one, keep on testing.